Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update. And so I'm here with the latest with what is going on for Lee, which is now a hurricane. So it is going to continue intensifying over the course of the next several days, eventually becoming a major hurricane and could be pretty catastrophic. So we're going to be looking at some model data as well as what is currently happening across the Caribbean and surrounding areas. And we also want to briefly look at other systems as well. And before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. All right, so first things first, we're briefly going into the Caribbean. And again, we've got that surface trough extended into the Northern Islands. And that is uh, the reason we're seeing all these thunderstorms popping up this afternoon across parts of the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, and uh, even going near the Cayman Islands, we're seeing some thunderstorm activity popping up as well. But across most other islands, there isn't a whole lot happening. A bit of activity in parts of Puerto Rico and uh, sections of the Leeward Islands such as Antigua, Barbuda, but not seen much as we head further south and going into parts of Central America down to the vicinity of around Panama and uh, also across some parts of Northern South America as we head into this afternoon. But for most other areas, as I said, nothing much happening. So it's been a rather hot and dry day like many recent days have been for some of us. And so let's now go ahead and talk about what is ahead in terms of uh, potential for Formation in the coming weeks, after which we will go on to Lee and or other systems. So we're looking at the Global Tropics Hazards Outlook Map. Now, the peak day of the hurricane season is the 10th of September, which is just a couple of days from now. And, and we're going to be focusing on weeks two and three. First up, we have week two. And so these brown shadings we're seeing is indicating the probability of below average rainfall. And then those areas of yellows and that mustard indicating uh, the probability of above average temperatures. It's already so hot. And then in parts of northern South America, there could be above average temperatures and things could get drier in parts of the Caribbean. And this is as we're going to be heading to the week of the 13th to the 19th of September. Not 100% guaranteed. But this is looking pretty interesting here. And then across the main development region, we're seeing that green spot, uh, the probability of above average rainfall, and then that red and white striped area. Tropical cyclone development and many models have been hinting at seeing something else as we're going to be heading into the latter part of next week. So we definitely want to keep our eyes on the main development region. It is pretty active out there and will remain that way for some time. And then as we head to week three now, we're seeing somewhat of the same picture for the main development region. So we will have these tropical waves continuously moving off Africa and conditions will be conducive enough to allow for development. So a lot more storms are probably on the horizon. Now we've got our active hurricane out there, which is Lee. So it has officially earned that hurricane title. And here we have it. We're looking at the infrared satellite imagery here. And earlier there was a bit of shear impact in it, but we can see that it is going against the odds and intensifying as forecast. And so it is going to be making its way to the west northwest and then eventually to the northwest moving to the north of northeastern islands of the caribbean so it's not going to be moving into the caribbean and then as we look at the cone forecast here we can see it maximum sustained winds of 75 miles per hour and it is uh, moving to the west northwest at 14 miles per hour and we see that as we're going to be heading into the end of this week going into friday it is expected to become a major hurricane although i think it is possible that it could become a major hurricane before friday evening so let's see what's going to be happening with it. But the good news is that at the peak intensity, it is likely to be offshore. Now, in terms of what happens from the end of this cone onwards, there have been trends that this will be remaining offshore of the U.S. I keep getting the questions from you guys. So it is likely that this is going to be remaining offshore. Although, interestingly, some models want to take it a bit further west. And really, there is a lot of uncertainty down the road because we're talking about several days out from now. And as I've mentioned in previous updates, heading beyond five days means that accuracy tends to decrease. So we want to keep watching this hurricane as time goes by. Again, likely to become a Cat 4. And there are models that are suggesting that it could become a Cat 5. The high resolution models showing a very strong hurricane with winds up to 175 and 180 miles per hour. That would be absolutely catastrophic. But uh, thankfully, it should remain offshore. However, if you're in Bermuda, you want to keep watch because this could move by very closely 
as a very strong hurricane, a cat four hurricane. So if you're in Bermuda, you want to watch for next week. And I'm, I'm going to be keeping you guys posted, of course. Now we have our other systems out there. We've got Invest 96L earlier today. It lost a bit of its formation chance. It was high at 70%, but it was recently downgraded to 60%. So not a big change. And eventually models are expecting that it will become a tropical storm and it will be moving generally to the northwest. And while moving by, it could induce some uh, shower and thunderstorm activity across the Cabo Verde Islands. And then up there, we've got what is left of Franklin that might try to regenerate offshore of Europe. So let's see what's going to be happening with that system up there. But then we're looking at the dry air map. And here we can see that there is really no dry air impact in Lee at the moment. But out ahead of it, we do see that we've got some dry air moving across parts of the Caribbean. And where we have a lot of dry air is where we typically find more stable atmospheric conditions. So typically not a whole lot of showers and thunderstorms happening within those spots. So across parts of the Caribbean, as we saw, especially Eastern Islands, there hasn't been a whole lot going on this afternoon. But we've got Lee out there. It is on its way to becoming a major hurricane and could potentially become a Category 5 monster. Fortunately, not going to be moving into anywhere, at least that is not expected as of right now. And so guys, I want to point you to my next channel, which is Weather Extras. I recently posted an update after somewhat of a hiatus, so you can go ahead and check it out. Uh, it's basically talking about the fact that we're going to be seeing more and more systems and the fueling agent for them. So you can go ahead and check out that video, not very long, and you can leave some feedback in the comments as well. Now, as it relates to impacts in northeastern islands of the Caribbean, the National Hurricane Center is still uh, urging persons there to keep monitoring the system because, again, we have the colon forecast and that is to track the center of the storm. And once it gets pretty massive out there, impacts could be a bit widespread. But of course, the worst of it will remain offshore. So we could see some of the rain bands move in and induce some inclement weather, some periodic showers here and there and gusty winds at times and also. So the swells that Lee will be generating could cause life-threatening surf and rip current conditions. So if you're planning to go to the beach as we head into this weekend, it's not going to be a very good time out there because there's going to be a major hurricane offshore. So please exercise caution, guys. And I'll be keeping you posted on all that is happening with Lee as time goes by. So again, there can be changes and what is to happen for the long term remains unclear because there are uncertainties down the road. There are many possibilities on the table but generally models have been keeping this offshore of north america this could potentially affect atlantic canada we don't know as yet as we head into this weekend and early next week there should be a pretty good picture of what is up ahead so that is what i wanted to share with you guys in this update and i trust and hope that you found it to be quite informative however if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments i'll respond to you once i get the chance to do so and as always remember to be weatherwise.